Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. This is Nuggets of Truth. In John chapter 8, verse 52 through 59, Jesus is in a hot dispute with the Pharisees who called him all kinds of names and said all kinds of mean things about him. They called him a Samaritan and said that he had a demon and all kinds of insulting things. So let us pick up the story now for context. John chapter 8, verse 52 through 59. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died and did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died and the prophets died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old. Have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. I want to focus on one verse, verse 56. It says, Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. When in the world did Abraham see Jesus' day and was glad? To answer that, let us rewind back to the story of the binding of Isaac. Genesis chapter 22 records a strange command by God to Abraham. Genesis chapter 22 verse 1 through 2 says that God tested Abraham by commanding him to take his son, his only son Isaac, whom he loved, and go to the land of Moriah. This is a picture, a type of foreshadowing of the coming Messiah. Abraham is the picture of God. Isaac is a type of Christ. Look at the words that God says in Genesis chapter 22, verse 2. Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. He said, your only son. Did you notice that? John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. See the similarities? Jesus is the promised Son of God. Isaac is the son of the promise. Think about it. Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. But God said, Your son, your only son. Why? Because Ishmael was the son of the bond woman, while Isaac was the son of the free woman. Galatians chapter 4, verse 23 through 31. Then Abraham and Isaac traveled for three days, and on the third day, Abraham saw the place from afar off. Jesus was in the ground for three days. What did Abraham see on the third day? He saw Mount Moriah. The same Mount Moriah that, according to 2 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1, Solomon built the temple, the house of the Lord on. The same exact spot where the angel of the Lord had appeared to his father David on the threshing floor of Arona, the Jebusite. The same place where David said to Arona, also known as Ornan, Give me the site of the threshing floor that I may build on it an altar to the Lord. Give it to me at its full price, that the plague may be averted from the people. 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 22. When Arona, or Ornan, said, Take it, I give it to you, my lord the king. This was David's famous reply, 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 24. But King David said to Ornan, No, but I will buy them for the full price. I will not take for the Lord what is yours, nor offer burnt offerings that cost me nothing. This is the same of Moriah that Jesus would die on some 2,000 years later. Jerusalem is in the land of Moriah where Abraham was commanded to go. Jesus was crucified outside the city wall of Jerusalem in a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, which 
is all in the land of Moriah where Abraham was told to go and sacrifice his son Isaac. While Jesus was crucified at the same exact spot as Solomon's temple, since he was crucified outside the gate because the sacrifice had to be burned outside the camp, according to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 11 through 12, he was crucified on that same mountain. The temple was built on the exact spot where King David saw the angel of the Lord, according to 2 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1. And Golgotha is the exact spot where Isaac was offered. This all took place on one mountain in the land of Moriah, which is Jerusalem. The reason for the temple being built on the exact spot where King David saw the angel of the Lord is another mystery that we'll leave for another day in another video. But are you starting to get the picture though? Abraham was told to go and sacrifice his son Isaac on Mount Moriah. Jesus would die some 2,000 years later on the same exact spot on the same Mount Moriah. It was a shadow of the good things to come. Now get this picture in your mind. When Abraham along with Isaac and the two servants that went with them got to Mount Moriah, Abraham told the servants to stay there. He said, stay here. And the boy and I will go and worship and come again to you. Listen, on the Day of Atonement, nobody was allowed to be in the temple with the high priest as he went about his priestly duties, making sacrifices for the nation. All the people were to stay outside. Isaac, however, being the type of Christ, who is our high priest, went with his father Abraham as he would be the sacrifice. But the two servants were to stay at the foot of the mountain, just like the people were to stay outside the temple. So as they, Isaac and Abraham, ventured up the mountain, Isaac looks around and he notices that Abraham has the fire, his father. They have the wood, it's on his back. And again, his father's carrying the knife, but there is no sacrifice. So puzzled, he asks his father, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham's response is so profound. Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. God will provide for himself a lamb. Isn't that remarkable? It was never God's plan that man should die, but that God himself would die for man, our only acceptable offering for sin. Jesus is the lamb of God, the lamb that God himself provided, the lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. It is Jesus who is our acceptable offering for sin. Now, I want you to think about this. Get this picture in your mind. By now, Isaac is probably a teenager. He could be older, but at least a teenager. Abraham is well over 100 years old. It is no way that he could forcibly bind Isaac and place him on the altar. I want you to look at this verse, Genesis chapter 22, verse 9. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham built the altar, laid the wood, then bound and laid his son Isaac on the wood. Again, this is a picture or foreshadowing of the Messiah. Isaac Isaac would have had to willingly submit to his father Abraham and let himself be bound and laid on the altar. Abraham could not have overpowered his young son Isaac in order to forcibly do it. Isaac willingly let his father place the wood for the sacrifice on him. This is a picture of Jesus letting his heavenly father place the wooden cross on him as he struggled up the hill to his crucifixion site. John chapter 19 verse 16 through 17 says, so he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which is 
Aramaic called Golgotha. So it could be argued that Isaac willingly laid down his life in order to obey the will of his father. Who would do that same thing 2,000 years later? Jesus, Yeshua, the promised Messiah. Listen, John chapter 10, verse 17 through 18. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. Jesus was obedient to his Father, just like Isaac was obedient to his Father. Jesus trusted in his Father, just like Isaac trusted in his his father, Abraham. Now, when Abraham was about to slay his son, Isaac, the angel of the Lord called to him and stayed his hand so that he would not slay the boy. When Abraham looked around, he saw a ram caught in a thicket by his horns, and he then used the ram as a burnt offering. Again, as I said earlier, it was never God's plan that man would die, but that he himself would die for man. Our only acceptable offering for sin is Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Lamb that God himself provided. This is a foreshadowing of what was to come. Listen to what the writer of the book of Hebrews said about the matter. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17 through 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able to even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. Who also was received back from the dead? Jesus, our Lord and Savior. That is how Abraham could see Jesus' day and rejoice. Abraham understood that what he had just experienced with his son Isaac was a foreshadowing of what was to come. Abraham knew that the promised Messiah would come through him and his son Isaac, who was a type of Christ, because God told him that. He, God told him that the promise would come through the promised son. And not only would the Messiah come through the promised son, but he he would bless, the Messiah would bless all the earth. Look at what the angel of the Lord said to Abraham because he had obeyed God. This is what God told him. Genesis chapter 22, verse 18. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. God gave Abraham a little foreshadowing of the role he would play on the world scene as the ancestor of the coming promised Messiah. He would be Jesus, the son of the living God. That Jesus, Jesus is the promised Messiah. I'm here to tell you, my friends, everything in scripture points to Jesus. Without Jesus, there is no hope. Without Jesus, there is no life. Without Jesus, there is no salvation. Therefore, we rejoice in the knowledge of who Jesus is and what he has so willingly done for us, mainly purchasing our salvation with his own blood, the innocent for the guilty, the righteous for the unrighteous. So let me sum all of this up for you. Abraham's offering of Isaac is a type of Christ. It serves as a foreshadow of what was to come, namely the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Isaac is the son of promise. Jesus is the promised son. Isaac willingly submitted to his father. Jesus willingly submitted to the will of his father. Isaac carried the wood up the mountain. Jesus carried his wooden cross up the mountain. Isaac was figuratively sacrificed on Mount Moriah. Jesus was physically sacrificed on Mount Moriah. Isaac was figuratively raised from the dead. Jesus was physically raised from the dead. I want to say thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I'm Kenny Yates, and this has been Nuggets of Truth. Be blessed and stay blessed.